there were once two villages of monkeys that were separated only by a narrow river. They were the bushy monkeys and the long-tailed monkeys. They were each fiercely independent and proud of their own way. They believed each to be the sole inheritors of the forest and all of its bounties. Because they were so competitive, they often fought each other for fruit and rarely cooperated. Despite this, hard times fell upon both sides of the river. They were all falling victim to a mysterious disease that was causing them to become sick and lethargic. Resources were scarce as everyone became sick and the ungathered fruit rotted on the ground. They had different temples and even different gods, but both groups of monkeys prayed to their various powers for help. A stranger came to the bushy monkey village. He wore a heelless robe and looked slightly odd and acted in ways that weren't to everyone's liking, though he proved himself a generally trustworthy monkey on account of his bushy appearance. He came to the village and healed the sickness that was going around so that the bushy monkeys could go back to living their lives. It made the bushy monkeys very proud that their prayers had been answered. It affirmed to them the validity of both their religion and their pantheon of gods. One day, one of the bushy monkeys looked out of her window across the river and noticed that there was a long-tailed monkey wearing a healer's robe going from house to house in the other village. Soon word got round that they too had their own healer. It was an irritation to the bushy monkeys because they felt less special, but they chose to push forward and not be too upset about it. After all, they'd been cured of the sickness by this stranger and thus could lead normal lives. The real problem came when one day, as one of the monkeys was looking out of their window, they saw a long-tailed monkey hide beneath the bridge and change costume into a bushy monkey. When they did so, they figured out that the long-tailed monkeys had sent one of their spies into the bushy monkey village. Word got round very quickly. Soon the bushy monkey healer was arrested and an emergency meeting was called. They brought representatives from both sides of the river to meet in the old forest hall, a place that hadn't been used for generations. What's the meaning of this? inquired the monkey chieftain of the bushy village. Yes, explain now before we sentence you to death. You must come clean with us. Have you been a spy for the bushy monkeys? Upon which side of the river does your loyalty lie? The stranger monkey calmly apologised. I didn't intend for any deception, the monkey explained. You see, I'm not a native to this forest. I'm neither a bushy monkey nor am I a long-tailed monkey. With this, he removed both his healer's robe and his disguise, and he appeared as just a regular, plain old monkey with a stubby tail and short fur. Do you see, I wasn't spying at all. I heard you pray night after night, and I knew I could answer your prayers and heal your people of the sickness from which you all suffered. But I knew that there was no way to be let into your respective villages if you didn't first see me as one of your own, which is why I had to wear these disguises. All of the monkeys were shocked that just a regular, unspecial monkey had made its way into their ranks. It is true, the monkeys agreed. If we had known you were just any ordinary monkey, we probably would have killed you, as is our way. The monkeys of both sides of the river hotly debated among themselves, as they were not sure what to do with this interloper who had lived among them. Doing good, yes, but he also knew of their ways, habits and secrets. They could not agree to give him over to the bushy side, nor the long-tailed side, because each wanted to be the exclusive owners 
of the strange monkey's healing magic. Still, some thought that they should kill him. They debated over whether they should eat him to gain his powers. The chieftains even briefly spoke about the possibility of going to war over ownership of the monkey. When this became obvious to the healer monkey, and he recognized the conflict that was brewing, he decided to intervene by making his final revelation. You must not go to war over a simple monkey, for ultimately, I'm not even that. But I speak this to you now, knowing that the moment I remove my final disguise, you will no longer see or hear me. When I am no longer wearing your likeness, you will no longer understand me. However, when you understand what is within you, bushy or long-tailed, then you will truly understand me and my power will live within each of you instead of this form you see before you. While the monkeys on both sides were discussing what should be done, they realized two things at once. One was that even though they had been arguing, this was the first time the one had spoken to each other in many generations. The other was that the strange monkey had now vanished, leaving behind only his healer's robes and disguises. For generations afterwards, the monkeys disagreed about what the visit of the strange monkey had meant. Some built shrines to him, begging him to return. Some wrote down everything he had said in gold and worshipped the box that the sacred writings were kept in. Others worshipped the robe he had worn or the disguises he had worn. The bushy monkeys worshipped the bushy costume and kept it in a special chest to be taken out once a year. And it was a similar affair with the other monkeys in the long tail costume. Most bushy monkeys agreed that to portray the healer as a long-tailed monkey was tantamount to heresy, and most long-tailed monkeys held a much similar view in the opposite direction. It was a rare monkey indeed who ever took what the healer monkey had said to heart, but those that did often came to realize that what was true about them didn't have anything to do with being a monkey either. Those monkeys who took the healer's words into themselves noticed that they started to lose their own disguises. Eventually, both factions of monkey people settled that it was the highest blasphemy to presume to discard aspects of one's identity in the way that the healer had. Only when the sickness once more returned to their villages did they reflect on relaxing their restrictions. <laughs>